let's put together a quick page in our quiet crafting space, settle in and have a little chat. Hello and welcome to the treasured page. I'm Melanie and this is our quiet crafting space and today I'm having a look at the French Linen Botanical Journal. I am trying to clear the decks because I would like to take part in some of the interesting challenges that will take place in December. I am toying with the idea of doing a December daily um, but I can't do any of those things unless I've got my mind clear and my projects all put to one side or finished. So that's what this week is about, finishing, completing projects. So this is just an image that I found that I like. Nice botanical images there. I think it came from um, wallpaper or it's an image of fabric and it was on the internet and I printed it out. So this journal is just going to be for me so I can put things like that in there. I'm just deciding whether this is, I think this is a belly band, let's do that. Or was it a side tuck? I can't remember now what I wanted. Oh well, it's down now as a belly band. So I am here sitting in my brand new comfy craft room chair. It is absolutely amazing. I don't know. I can twist, I can turn, I'm on wheels. It's very strange. I'm, I'm a bit like a crafter on roller skates here because I can move about. I'm absolutely loving it, guys. I'm so, so pleased. I'm so pleased that it's arrived, that we put it together, that we had support in buying it. And it hasn't cost the, us the earth because of all the amazing support from here um, on the treasured page has just allowed me to be able to have it. So it's unbelievable. I can't thank you all enough. So I'm very pleased because it's so... It, I can't tell you how uncomfortable the other one was. And, uh, yeah, I do have a bad back. It's something that I've sort of had since I was a teenager, really. It was sort of a bit discovered when I was 14 that I was going to have a, back, a bad back. It was always going to be part of my future, unfortunately. Um, it doesn't affect my walking or any of those things, but it is ever-present and uncomfortable. And, uh, yeah, so I do... I can't just... Uh, sit in a in a chair for long periods and time and then expect it to all be okay so this is lovely because it's got a lovely lumbar support i haven't needed to put an extra cushion it's all just at the moment fantastic so see how we get on this is my first proper craft session in the chair and i'm i've got all the height i could go up or down we don't know up or down so i'm just putting together a very um quick having a go just putting together a, a little belly band idea here just framing this image of the botanics there that's just um just make sure i can yep get in there for putting things in and then i've got this pink sari silk that we've used on the front cover here uh, on the back front and back so i'm just pulling this color back in when you get, if you get something like this, if you ever come across this sort of sari silk and can buy it, you often find that it's lengths that have been sewn together. So therefore, halfway through, you will find that it's been sewn together in a very haphazard way. And it may be that uh, you could probably sew it together a little bit neater yourself if you really needed to. I usually embrace the twists and the turns but I think on this occasion I'm just going to snip that away but if I give it a bit of length then that usually ends up on a tag or something and then I think I'll just I'm going to just put that in the middle and mute that, that down give it a pink tone so how is everybody so lots of exciting things happening this week people getting together with their families and uh, lots of people celebrating the thanksgiving and and getting and having uh you know all their family and giving thanks well i'm very thankful for my chair so that's me giving thanks to you guys we don't celebrate it in the uk but we are gearing up for all the holidays and uh, the festivities of the coming month um i'm going to cut that bit as well 
So two exciting things happened. I have been able to get my two journals up together to go out and be sent out. So they were sold and that was a wow, oh, that was so special. So special to see um to see how that that's affected others and uh you know, the gleeful emails that I received to say that they were so delighted that they'd been able to, to buy the journals and it was wonderful. So thank you very much for that. So all my orders are out. That's very exciting. They have been they have been all boxed up today, ready to go. So that is great. They'll be going out first thing tomorrow morning. Very pleased with all of that. Very exciting to wave goodbye to a journal and wish it well in its new new home and hope it brings as much joy as it did creating it. Now, I just got this bird. I love this bird. And I'm just wondering if that's a bit too much, whether it wants to be up or down, maybe, maybe up high. I don't know. I just feel that it works with those colours and just whether it's getting a bit tangled up in the... And there, I have got this uh, tag lurking about the table. So with the, that's quite nice, isn't it? My ephemera holder is going off to Japan tomorrow. I've got journals going off to California. It's absolutely brilliant. A huge congratulations to Studio 989, who comments a lot here in the description below. Well done. Thank you so much for... Um, being the now proud owner of the Hazel Journal and to Tamara Black Coffee for being able to get hold of the other cornucopia traveller's notebook. I'm so excited, girls. Right. Let's just move the journal out of the way because I just want to see if I can cut out that little white bit there. Isn't he lovely? I love this bird and he's got a little caterpillar so he's got his lunch and uh, this one comes from the freebie digital kit so that's up on the Kofi page. If you haven't seen the birds they're just lovely. They can go for any style of journaling any time of the year I'm sure. My next big video coming out this week is going to be a Christmas challenge as set by Rachel and Bella from Rachel and Bella Crafts and Rose from Journals in Time have challenged me to the A to Z Christmas challenge and I am letter Y so that will be coming out for Friday um, but if you are in the US you will be able to see that ahead of Friday so it will be coming to you because by the time I put it up it's scheduled to go out one o'clock one a.m uk time which means you girls in the u.s get that on thursday which is thanksgiving so at the time of um, putting that all together i hadn't quite realized that so i'll just say ahead of time um because when you're watching it i'll be talking about christmas and wishing you all a happy christmas but um so for now i'm also wishing you um, a happy thanksgiving so to all the ladies and all the guys that are celebrating Thanksgiving this week, a very, very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you have a fabulous time with your families and um, make the best of it. And if you are not spending time with anybody, but you would like to have a little quiet crafting space on Thursday, if you're in the US, then from around in this evening about six o'clock I shall be popping up and there we go you will be able to have a bit of company and we can we can talk about Christmas <laughs> for the Christmas challenge so if you don't celebrate celebrate Christmas you still might get a few ideas but it but it is um it is Christmas themed because that was the challenge however however my little bit of it isn't particularly religious or anything like that. And we will be looking, as always, at something nature themed. So you might enjoy it from the point of view of the ideas that I will be bringing to you. So there we go. I've uh, waffled on about that, but that is coming up 
on Friday for most people, but for the US you will see that in the evening. And it will be uh, Friday evening for Australia, New Zealand, and then UK ladies will wake up to that in the morning on Friday. So that's what's happening. And here we've got this embellished belly band. I think I can get away with a bit of blue down there because we have got it in this bird. So the bird's up on the Kofi page as a freebie um, little pack of birds. I'm really pleased with these. They, they are good sizes and they will just nip in on most journaling cards and, you know, nice tag. Got the swan there. I need to talk to you about my swan because I couldn't say it before because I had lost my swan paperweight. So back here in the journal, now I'm thinking about it, I added this little black swan and stamp and I said I was going to talk to you about it. Well, I'm really, really pleased I didn't because you know how things sort of work out. Um, what happened is I said, oh, I'll, I'll tell you about my swan story and then I didn't do it I sort of forgot but that's because I'd also lost grandma's paperweight so I was going to use that as a prop because a swan in my world is relevant the black the black swan stamp comes from Australia because the black swan comes from Australia so that's part of the story but because I was talking about plant collecting and specimen collecting and taking things from other countries to bring back and the fascination and of all of that um, people in that time were also collecting birds bird feathers bird and um, bees and what else were they butterflies butterflies were huge butterfly collecting um so the black swan was also one of the collected birds that they brought over not dead alive along with um certain pheasants and things as well there were three things in particular that they brought out I can't remember and they brought over this black swan and so the black swan was then um, given to gentry and pieces people like that it eventually ended up being exhibited in um, not so much zoos but sort of stately homes and what would happen Unlike the white swan, they're a little bit more unruly and they're a little bit more um, adventurous. So they are quite notorious for escaping from where they sort of, was, you know, intended to be. They thought, "Pooh, no thanks, I'm off. And they are the backpackers of the swan world. So the black swan um, escaped and... When I was younger, growing up, the black swan was very much part of my childhood because we would go down to Devon in the in the south of England, southwest of England. So if you picture England, it's left, it's west, the west country, Devon. Uh, and then beyond that is Cornwall. So in Devon, in a place called Dawlish, they had the black swans. Well, they had originated because they'd escaped and they shouldn't have been there at all. But they had. And what happened is they bred. And then all swans, uh, it was decreed, were protected by the crown. But at the time when I was embarking upon this story, unbeknown to me... The very next day, or certainly that evening, I was so pleased I didn't say it, was I was going to go on to this pre, another pre-ramble all about the swans being belonging to the crown, which I would have said belonged to the queen. And then the next day, unfortunately, we had the, the terrible news um, that the queen had passed away. So the swans do not belong to the queen at all. They now belong to the king. So I, I would have had to have been very mindful of what I said. Um, and sometimes I just feel that there's somebody looking out for me because had I not lost my swan paperweight, I, would, I wouldn't have stopped myself from telling that story and I would have made a massive faux pas on the day when we just uh, didn't need that. So there we go. The swan is... is uh, a symbol of grace, um, but also has the legs paddling below the water and is frantically making everything work whilst appearing serene and calm on the top. 
And uh, yes, so the swan's an important little image there for anybody who's feeling a little bit overwhelmed by things and they're trying to present themselves in the very best possible swan-like elegant way and uh, don't allow the people that see the little motoring feet underneath. Now that's fine. I think that's all of us, isn't it? So the black swan, the little bit of a rebel, um, refused to stay put and then obviously went over. Just using my glue rubber here, it's quite useful. If you get it before the glue's completely dried hard, you'll be able to remove any little glue bits that... Have, and there it goes, it just bunches up like a normal eraser would do. And it's funny, it's sort of like a funny rubberized thing. Yeah, so the black swan made its way to wherever the black swan wanted to be and it so turned out that it was in a lovely little river down in Dawlish, in Devon, in England anyway. I'm sure there are other pockets of places where they sighted themselves but... Uh, Yes, that was the little swan story and why I liked it and why I, I, I was drawn to it and why I sort of tucked it under there. So that was the Australian black swan, native to Australia, but has come in and lived there. So there's a few bird images that appear in the journal and I just wanted to clear up some of them. So black swan from Australia, brought over to England, told to go somewhere where it's supposed to, refused to do it, total rebel and decided to live elsewhere and now we allow them to do that and they have colonised certain areas such as um, a river in Dawlish in Devon where you, where you can go and visit the black swans and they're absolutely beautiful just as much as the white swans and they all live in harmony and everything is marvellous. So that's fine, that was that story. Um, I don't know what this bird is but it's absolutely beautiful and the other bird, oh lots of birds now popping up and the other bird hiding tucked somewhere in here which caused a bit of controversy that's it I'm so sorry <clears throat> I didn't know my kiwi from my grouse and I wanted to do a public apology to all kiwis and, um, and anyone from New Zealand that took offence because <laughs> I've only got a cartoon version, girls, so I'm sorry. But just to point out that this is a kiwi with its very long beak, OK? And this is a grouse, we think. So when I was talking about that story um, and when Arthur Bully was going to New Zealand, uh, we really wanted, we wanted a, a better image. So when I find a better image, I'll put one here. OK, so I do apologise profusely to our lovely subscribers in New Zealand and I hope that that clears it up and that uh, we will endeavour to find a very lovely image of the kiwi bird and that will come and live in this journal because it does have a part to the story of Arthur Bully and Harriet but and actually the daughter, um, Agnes, and they went out there. So that's important, so it does come into this story. And then the other thing that's happening, because we've got another we've got another page to do. Uh, we've got the Paris page coming up, and we've got some a, a, a lovely image I'm going to show you um, from one of the subscribers here, Aurora, who's been helping me with that one. And she is over on Coffee and Crafts with Rory. So thank you very much. We're going to show that image when we do the Paris page. Yes, yeah, so there's lots of little birds coming in because birds are obviously so important to all the botanics. That's how they spread the seeds, lots of different ways. And I think this wants a little journaling card. Oh, I've got this. So this came out of a magazine or a book. Um, it's a bit shiny. But it's not too shiny, it's not high gloss. I don't like the high gloss ones, they're a bit too much. Just about okay. And then I've got this craft paper, sort of like a nice packaging paper, and I'm thinking I'm going to back it. So I'm just going to do a little journaling card to go with the belly band. 
And I found this illustration and this is in French and it is a garden in Paris, says here. So this is an organised, ornate garden with a river, um, an obelisk. It's probably something very important. I don't actually know where it is, but it says about the gallery. If anybody recognises, I don't know if you can see, but if anybody recognises this, it says Tem... Hang on, now, let me stick this down before the glue dries. It says Superb Garden Anglaise. So that's a superb English garden. Um, but it does say Paris there. So now we're moving back into uh, visiting Paris and the organised gardens that would have been over there. Absolutely stunning gardens in Paris. And I just wanted to add something to remind us how just how organized the gardens were it wasn't just about plant collecting it was also the display and that's huge we we spend a lot of time displaying our gardens and 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 towns can win awards if they have made effort to have the flower arrangements and gardens all looking nice and neat so that is part of the culture and over in France as well lots of European countries will have their lovely displays so I wanted this as part of it but I think that just sticking a book page down on a piece of craft paper and calling it a journal card is as basic as it gets so therefore there we are that's a nice basic idea of how to do a journaling card very simply but if you would like to embellish this further and take this up to um, a more interesting format especially if it's shiny and glossy so if you've got a really glossy page from a book like that where you can see that glaring in the light what you could do is you could get tracing paper or a glassine bag in my case because this is very shiny probably more shiny than this but it's the right kind of shiny because it also comes with that lovely crinkle and mottled effect. So although, yes, it is shiny. Oh, there's something about that that's tactile and lovely. And so it's OK. So we prefer that. So this is a spare bag. And what I'm now going to do, I'm going to cut this off down the side here because I just want this glassine panel here. The back one's got the join in it, so we just want the front. Okay. And now what I should have is just the top sheet. And we can use that, we'll just pull that bit away. And then there's this bit here as well. So that's another another bit. Quite like that as well. And there's a bit oh keeping everything now. And I quite like that. Okay, well we use everything then. Alright, so we've got this. And the idea here is to just cover that over the top of that. Just cut it to size. Okay, and if you're familiar with the sewing machine and you're quite happy to use it, then the next step would be to sew all the way around and that to be a nice cover on the top which would finish it off quite nicely and have that 
crackly glassine topper so that you can peep through and see the image underneath and it mutes down any high gloss shine but also just gives a bit of interest or you could glue round ever so carefully around the edge so that you're not interfering with the image with your glue and you've got a good a good glue a nice liquid silicon glue would work if you can get a bead of glue thin enough and you would just glue round glue it all down uh, but I'm gonna go I'm gonna sew it because I'm I'm quite happy to do that and then the other thing I'm going to do is I've got these botanical stickers which have been given to me and they're the plastic ones that unfortunately we get so they have become part of my junk journaling because I don't really love them and I won't be buying them again and if you get a scrap pack from me you might find you get some of these and if you do in the future if you ever win a giveaway you may find that some of these come your way um, in which case a good idea is to add them in here that's what I'm doing with them anyway and then I'm putting that over the top and they're becoming quite an interesting um, well there might be a shaker I mean they will move and I'm just going to sew round and capture them in there and I can't now see that they are shiny but I can see that they are botan botanical plant images with with leaves and they're not too compromising the view of the scenery in there and the whole thing is just interesting so I'm going to sew round and I'll just check that I'm still happy with that as an idea Okay, back from the sewing machine success. It's worked. I've gone round. I've got some nice copper thread in there today. Uh, a little bit of a wibble there, but it doesn't matter. It's all fine. And what I've created is a shaker because they do move around and uh, you can see that there is the image there. I suppose it might have been nice if it was one big fern or if it had little leaves, but you could play around with it. It's just an idea. Really cool and it certainly tidied away those bits that have been on the desk and I didn't quite know what to do. I wanted to put them in the journal because they were botanical images of eucalyptus and that is exactly you know, all part of it, but I didn't really want the shiny plastic in the journal. So that is a way of dealing with anything like that. If you've got a shiny um, photograph or photographic paper or any sort of image and you just think, oh, well, that would be nicer if I could just do something to it, a little bit more tactile, a little bit more interesting. It's another idea, isn't it? So you could make a load of these and they could be little shaker journaling cards and there they are on the back there and I suppose we want to have a stamp go to stamp sets here just anything with a botanical image on it really <laughs> um, something like that maybe a big let's have a nice oh, yeah let's have this nice big one here okay I'm just going to pull this off here so I just like to have these sort of things on hand I think they're useful the acrylic blocks aren't too expensive and the silicon stamps just seem to add a little something and once you've got them and you look after them um, they're usually pretty good if you can keep them out of the heat but um, Try and keep them on their acetate. If you keep them protected either in a folder or on acetate front and back, you usually find that they are okay. Sometimes you'll get the ones that perish and go a bit sticky if you, you've got them too hot or they've dried out or something's happened to them. Just, just try and keep them in their packaging. And I haven't really found I've had too much of a problem and they're not they're not um, expensive to buy and sometimes come free with a magazine so so I've used the archival ink here in black jet that's by Ranger Tim Holtz does one uh, in black soot so I'm going to ask for that for Christmas but it comes in a pack of four and um, you get the the one that I've been enjoying recently is also ground espresso so it's like this but big black. So jet black is a blue undertone 
if we're going to get really particular about it. Isn't that lovely? That's come out really nice. And listen, there's a lovely crinkle to that. And then they, they will move about, I would think. Okay, so that one's now moved. And then we can just see the images. And the other thing that would be really nice is to put stamps in there as well. So we could make a few more of these. Um, but that was just a general idea. Uh, so I'll pass that one over to you and we can perhaps do all sorts of themes with that. But yes, yeah, shaker cards are nothing new. But I just thought to way of using up some of those um, maybe fussy cuts that you're not sure of or certainly the shiny stickers to put it on a bit of glassine that's just lovely there like that that's really really good I love that and then the other thing that I was given the other day from my friend in Japan writing space absolutely beautiful is going to come and live there so that is another page done. I'm really happy with that. That's come together nice and neatly. Uh, that's leading us on into the Paris page, but also now I'm thinking something wants to go there. But maybe I might like to do a bit of a collage. So we've got this sort of thing. And if I just, let me just sort of think about it. If I do that. That's quite nice. Let's take away that bottom bit there. So I'm using a three in one. I'm steering away from the stick glue as much as possible. Stick glue's fine, but I do notice that after a few months I am still getting some peeling up. So I am going to be using the three in one as much as I can because I want my journals to last the test of time. So stick glue's fine if you're then going to sew it or you've got a permanent glue stick. All right, so I didn't like the sort of stain on the paper. So that sort of takes away that color on the paper. That gives me a nice writing space. And then perhaps we want something up the side here. What else have we got? Page. It even says the forest up there, so that's quite nice. We might have that. Book page. Okay, I'm going to use this Grand Espresso ink and I'll just put a little bit of ink just to take that white edge off of this paper here which I've got a little polka dot, a grey colour, sort of a coffee colour and just found that in the scrap tray so I'll just use that as a an element here, maybe rip that bit as well, give it a torn edge, much more interesting that way. It can let's see what's more interesting that bit along the top and then my book page coming in like that but using a little bit of this spare sari silk that tied in over here looks like a lot but it's not that's literally a smear of the glue there so that I can put that on and then that will come and be down there so this is a bit more fragile this book page it is an older book page um, it's not a vintage one particularly more of a retro book but it's still fragile because it's 
thin recycled paper so a little bit more glue on all of that just to keep it tied down and then I can see that that is pretty good there so we just turn it over and then I'm going to put glue on the whole lot and that is just going to be a little cluster on the top of this page and just brings it all in because the colours will match and tie in and then it gives journaling space, it shows you where you need to be writing something if you wanted to and if not you could put a corner tuck or something over the top and still have a nice background there. So it's just see if I can release that from the back. Yeah, it's washy. Uh, feels quite sticky. I'll just give it a bit of extra glue in case. I don't know where these came from. It could have been, it could have been cut off of a strip. In any case, I think I can get away with it being up there. Because it's see-through enough and then we just get the bone folder and just squash that all down and that's how I'm doing this page I don't even need to do that that's great I think it would have been quite nice to have inked around there so I'm just sort of tentatively doing a bit around there now blend that in a bit there and along the bottom and that blends it all in and there we go that is my double spread here for today and I just thought I'd, I'd sort of dip back into this wonderful journal which I so enjoy doing and you know I keep finding little bits that that I think would be perfect because I've got plenty of pages so I haven't got too many more now I've pretty much filled up there's another one there I'll probably do that off camera I've got an envelope I might like to make I've lost my explorers for that page so we'll tie it all together eventually and then we'll have this lovely flip through as I said I'm in no rush because it's just my happy place so I just like to come here and and tinker about in it but I'm, I'm really pleased with that I love the colors it all ties in and it's really nice and I'm just going to leave you with some most amazing photographs that have been sent in by Lucy. Lucy's one of the subscribers here but she's from England uh, she lives near Bath and she has got a friend in Liverpool and Lucy's been to visit the Ness Botanical Gardens and she's had a look and I'm showing you the photos they are absolutely brilliant. So it's all of this time of year at the moment where it is um, autumn and things are not in full bloom but you can just see the organised gardens and how they have been managed, manicured and kept and even now and the old bell and things like that. Well, the old bell was highly used because they did have a workforce at the botanical gardens and they did use female gardeners to keep everything in check, particularly when the First World War broke out. And they would use that bell and that would be the start of the day, the lunch and the going home bell. And they would always um, ring the bell at a certain special time of day and they used to annoy some of the male workers that wanted to rush back to be, uh, be in position for the football or go to the football stadium. And they all had to race down apparently it was a bit of a spectacle when that bell went everybody ran because they all wanted to get that last bus home <laughs> and they never brought it forward they did it on purpose but it, it was the head gardener that they had there who used to be a complete stickler for time and it just worked they all got they all got the gardens done and they if they ran they could get that last bus home so they all looked at that bell waited for it to go and then boom they all ran down down the road to go and get the bus to be able to get back and make make it in time for the football <laughs> had quite the workforce, lots and lots of people all rallying to make sure that these gardens were a sensation and they were and they, you can see, they still are today. So absolutely fantastic. Thank you so much, Lucy, for bringing all your wonderful photographs that we can see in the original old house still stands and looks as if it's brand new. Um, I, I was very moved that you sent those in and I'm very pleased that my stories have inspired you. And also Arthur Bully is being honoured this November 2022. Uh, remember in November, 
for his great works and all that he did for the great 20th century plant explorer and sponsor of the risked life and limb to be able to bring the plants around the world and all the seed banks that now hold many specimens and many seeds that we can now enjoy and use in conservation projects around the world today. So thank you Lucy for bringing in those wonderful photographs and just uh, and enlightening us as to the Nest Botanical Gardens is absolutely just as astounding today as it was in yesteryear. And thank you very much, everybody, for listening. And I hope that you'll tune in on Thursday or Friday, depending on when the video comes out for you, to have a look at my Christmas special challenge, which is <laughs> which was quite the challenge. And that is for the bumper Christmas digital kit that has been sent over there are 72 pages but they only gave me two so I had the two of the 72 pages and uh, you can see how I managed to turn that into something fun so that is all there for you uh, scheduled to go up and you can have a look at that uh, press the bell icon because it'll come out at different times depending where you are in the world and you'll be able to have a look at that settle in and hopefully that'll give us a little bit of warm cozy fuzzy feelings from from uh, even if you are in the stonking heat i'm sure you will find some value in what i did for that challenge and if not do not worry i am going to take on some christmas challenges but it will not be too uh, literal. I shall be steering away from the Santas and all of that, and and uh, sticking very much with nature and the and the season changes. So I hope that that will be fun for you girls and um and boys. And I'd I'd love to hear your thoughts on this belly band idea and whether you'd like to have a go at the glassine shaker. So there we are. That's all to be to be uh, played played about with, and obviously. Um, hole punch and interesting punched out elements can go in there as well and you can do that however you want but that was just a little bit more of a different one with the glassine so it's a shaker of sorts but it wasn't sparkly so it was quite nice to just show you a slightly more muted palette of how you could still have fun with a shaker but it not be all about glitter and and um, tinsel you know it's something a little bit more different and uh, can work well in a vintage journal just as much as it can in any other paper craft so there we go guys I hope you've had fun there fun and value I'm sure as long as we're all having fun that's the main thing and settle down into your quiet crafts over the next few days if you've got some time off and you can make time for you then absolutely do that as we descend into December and hopefully some more videos throughout December for the December daily challenge which I'm sure I will take part in, in as best I can and bring to you as much fun and value as I can muster okay guys so thank you so much for everything and if you can subscribe to the channel that would be absolutely great I'm getting my packs all ready for my giveaway when we hit the 3,000 subscribers, I have got some interesting prizes to give away. So if you haven't already subscribed, please, please have a go at seeing if you could do that. And uh, then we can take part in the the prize giveaway. There will be 11 prizes to be giving away because it would be the 11th month. So that would be quite fun if we could do that this month. OK, guys, thanks very much for watching. And above everything else, just slow down and make crafting time for you. Bye-bye now.